The populists are very popular in the South, but they do not win control of Southern states. Why? Because the Democrats use against them the same tactics that had been used against Reconstruction. One, violence, uh, trying to prevent people from voting, particularly in African-American areas. Two, um, the cry of white supremacy, which is very powerful. White supremacy is in danger, was always a way of rallying white voters against any kind of insurgency. Uh, and or just absolute voter fraud. In these black belt counties, Democrats just stuff the ballots with votes for the uh, Democratic Party against the populists, um, uh, didn't let blacks vote, and then counted all these supposed black votes for the Democrats. For example, in Louisiana in 1892, the, the populists carried like all but five or six of the parishes of Louisiana. But in those five or six, which were the heavily black counties, the vote was so overwhelming, the official vote was so overwhelmingly for the Democratic Party that they won control of the state. But those votes were totally fraudulent. Um, but the Democrats finally decided that that was not a, how should we put it, not a stable way, not, not a permanent way. Outright fraud year after year was not a successful way of controlling the ballot. Far better was to just take the right to vote away from black men, so to eliminate the possibility of any future alliances of, people, of dissident whites with black voters. So it's the rise of the populist party frightening, scaring the wits out of the planter merchant alliance that ran the Democratic Party that leads directly to disenfranchisement and as I say, with the North uh, uh, no longer in any, uh, in, you know, no longer any interest in intervention. So by 1910 or 1908, the, the black vote has been basically eliminated in the South and does not come back again in most states until 1965 when the voting rights, this is why the Voting Rights Act is passed in 1965 because to rely on the states was proven to be impossible to uh, to uh, actually allow uh, 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 honest uh, voting. But many white voters were also eliminated. Because these measures were not purely racial, um, many white voters were also eliminated in this process. Um, the white vote in, in, in Mississippi, the black vote was completely eliminated, but the white vote was cut in half. And many of the people in charge didn't mind eliminating a lot of white poor voters also, especially in the aftermath of the populist uh, uprising. 80,000 white voters lost the right to vote in Louisiana, 60,000 in Mississippi. Um, and then finally, the last method to ensure uh, the, the elimination of black political influence was the all-white Democratic Party. The Democratic Party insisted it was a private organization, so the 15th Amendment did not apply to it, and in its primary elections, only whites were allowed to vote. And in effect, an arrangement or a, you know agreement was reached that whoever won the primary would get the vote of everybody, so there would be no contest in the general election. So whites would fight it out among themselves in the primary. Dissidents could fight it out with the establishment without any, either of them having to appeal to the black vote and giving any elect, electoral power to blacks. So, the end result of this was that the Democratic Party in the South becomes more and more associated with just white supremacy and, in fact, virulent race hatred. The, this, the, the, we see the rise of so-called demagogues, uh, Bilbo of Mississippi, Vardaman. Um, Tom Watson comes back into power in the early uh, 20th century after failing as a populist. He wins office, uh, gets to the Senate as a Democrat. Um, but on a policy of anti-black, anti-Catholic, anti-Jewish um, rhetoric. The South becomes a series of, in the first half of this 20th century, of what you might call rotten boroughs. This is an English phrase from English history. Rotten bor a rotten borough is a constituency with a tiny electorate that still has a member of parliament. This was before the so-called Reform Act of 1832. The lines of constituencies in parliament were centuries old, and towns which had disappeared completely almost 
had a member of parliament. So that's a rotten borough. Three or four people could elect a member of parliament. In the United States, the southern, the southern districts now, very few people are voting in the South. The, 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 the black vote's been eliminated. A lot of white votes have been eliminated. The number of people voting is very small. And yet they have the same number of men, you know, representatives in Congress and in the Senate uh, at, based on their whole population. Now, as I mentioned once, um, there were those in the 20th century who said they should lose some of their congressional representation. The 14th Amendment, remember? 14th Amendment says if you deny any group of men the right to vote, you lose representation in Congress in proportion. Well, a state where half the population is denied the right to vote should lose half their congressmen. But that provision was never enforced uh, by either the courts or the House of Representatives. Now, so the same people keep getting elected over and over and over again. There's, the South becomes a one-party area. The, it's a pure Democratic Party. The, the same people get elected over and over and over again to Congress. This doesn't make much difference as long as the Republican Party is in control nationally. But, and last week, our esteemed colleague Ira Katz-Nelson was awarded the Bancroft Prize by the university here for his recent book, Fear Itself, which is a study of the New Deal. And one of, a very, very excellent book. One of Katz-Nelson's point is, the, it points is how the power of racist Southern segregationist members of Congress warped the New Deal. Because when, de when in the Great Depression, the Democratic Party finally comes back into power in the country, who controls the committees of Congress? The, the, the chairmanships of committees in Congress are based on seniority. And the South has all the seniority because there have been no electoral contests there. So Southern segregationists come into power of the, of the, to lead the key committees of Congress. Now, FD, they work with FDR. They need economic aid, and the South is hit terribly by the Depression. But their power, and Katz Nelson lays this out, means that the New Deal, Social Security policies, labor legislation, housing policy, you name it, are all warped so as not to benefit blacks. Social Security doesn't apply to blacks at first, only for white people. How do they do that? Well, they eliminate the largest areas of black employment. Agricultural labor, domestic labor, which is 80% of the black population, is just eliminated from Social Security. Why? Those people worked because the white Southern congressmen, they did not want anything which would get economic relief to black Southerners and might weaken the control of the labor force on the part of Southern planter merchants. Federal housing policy actually, greatly, under the New Deal, greatly enhanced racial se uh, segregation in housing. The, the, the Federal Housing Administration would not give would not guarantee mortgages in integrated neighborhoods. Only segregated neighborhoods could get federal mortgages. Uh, our, another of our colleagues, Kenneth Jackson, showed that in his uh, book on the rise of the suburbs. The labor laws always had an exception for the South. Minimum wage, but lower in the South. So this is, what is the point here? It's the law, the, Cass Elson doesn't say this exactly, he should, but he's interested in the new deal. This is the long shadow of the failure of Reconstruction, reaching into the 20th century and the New Deal. The elimination of black voting in the South doesn't just affect the South. It affects the politics of the entire country, and the New Deal is a perfect example of that. What would the New Deal have looked like if the Southern white supremacy system had not been in existence? It might have taken a very different course. We might actually have had National health insurance, which <laughs> we still don't have. But, um, you know, uh, the, the American welfare state at its inception was, was warped and limited by the consequences of the failure of Reconstruction. 